the story. The rest of the story. Band leader, radio star Spike Jones. He knew gold when he heard it, and this was gold. Where on earth did this song come from, he asked band members and broadcasting colleagues. The reply, shrugs, all around. We ought to record it, he suggested, but there was a problem. A dispute between the musicians' union and recording studios, it was rapidly escalating into a war. As of New Year's Day 1948, the union was stonewalling the studios, and the date is now December 31, 1947, New Year's Eve. If we're going to do this, Spike Jones exclaimed, we'd better do it now. So with the countdown clock ticking, he got his band together. He headed for the studio, leaving unanswered that intriguing question, where did that song come from in the first place? The real and remarkable answer is, is the rest of the story. For well, once upon an autumn time three years previous, in the sleepy little hamlet of Smithtown, Long Island... There was a grade school music teacher named Donald Gardner. The school at which Don taught was so small that all of the grades performed at the annual choral concert. And this particular year, he had selected a song for each grade to sing, except the second grade. And while pondering an appropriate selection, the second grade teacher, Betty Stoll, said something funny. Her entire class began to laugh. And at that moment, Don Gardner got the idea for a song a song that he would write for the second graders at Smithtown, and he did, and everybody loved it. Two years later, at the urging of friends, Don played the song for a music publisher. The publisher took it and sent copies here and there, hoping some popular artist might sing it. But instead it was ignored. Until a year after that, when Spike Jones discovered it, and he became determined to record it. Well, now it's New Year's Eve. It's 1947, half past 11 p.m., less than half an hour. The RCA studios will close for who knows how long. So if Spike Jones wants to record Don Gardner's song, he and his band will have to make that recording right now. At five minutes till midnight, they're finished. But RCA will not release that record for another 11 months. You see, the grammar school choral concert for which Don Gardner wrote that song was the 1944 Christmas program. And since the union battle with the recording studios raged all through 1948, Don Gardner's tune was the only new Christmas song released and played on the radio that year. And as a result, being the only one, it was broadcast day and night, day and night, became an instant holiday classic, and it has remained such to this day. For what had inspired music teacher Don Gardner as he prepared for his school's Christmas pageant back in 1944 was the laughter of the second graders, the broad smiles, revealing a, a condition, a condition common to children of that age, affecting more than two-thirds of Don's second grade class, in fact. That's right. All those young smiles inspired the entreaty that begat a song entitled all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. You've heard that song most all your life at some time during each Christmas time. But now you know the rest of the story.